Welcome back and thanks for joining us on What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. With us this Sunday is Julie Moore, Secretary of the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. Also Emily Bird, Assistant Manager of the Clean Water Initiative. So I think we're talking water today. Thank yes. you so much both of you for joining us. A lot to mention. Uh, we already ran a story earlier in the show today about the report card when it comes to Vermont's infrastructure. Yep. Something we discussed earlier this week as well. With stormwater and wastewater, it was a D-plus. Julie, uh, this is for you. This is coming from the American Society of Civil Engineers. Uh, obviously, if you were a student getting this report card at home, not the best. Right. But given everything, was this expected? Well, our, our stormwater and wastewater infrastructure really suffer a lot of times from being out of sight and out of mind. Um, people forget that when you flush the toilet, that waste needs to go somewhere. Um, and it can be challenging for communities to get the commitment they need from their voters, from their ratepayers to make investments. Uh, we've seen a, a real, um, I think, transition over the last five years with some very significant bond votes being passed by municipalities from Montpelier to Burlington to Waterbury. Um, and, and we know that these investments are, are on the way. Uh, and the governor's budget this year provides more than $10 million to help support investments in, in wastewater and stormwater infrastructure as well. Um, so the, those investments are coming, um, and I look forward to seeing a better grade when they issue their next report card five years from now. Right, every five years. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't necessarily discouraging for you. No, I mean, I, I think we recognize a lot of this infrastructure is nearing the end of its useful life. Um, and, and these investments are needed to, to refurbish it um, and in some cases replace it outright. And, and the investments are, are underway um, and we know that they will ramp up over the next several years. Okay. Also this week, I guess you could say a promising response from the EPA when it comes to cleaning up Lake Champlain, especially with phosphorus. This has been an ever-evolving issue. Many governors have dealt with this. Yes. Um, how did this how did you take this letter this week i was thrilled to get this letter from epa frankly it indicates that we've put together now a package between all of the the regulatory programs that the agency of natural resources and agency of agriculture have worked really intently on over the last five years uh, have come to fruition uh, we've identified a long-term sustainable funding source that they believe is sufficient to meet our obligations uh, and we've figured out the the service delivery mechanism how we get those dollars out the door and doing work on the ground. And this was certainly last year and in previous years not so great news when it comes to this. How do you maintain this with the EPA? Well, I, we're, we've got ongoing uh, setups for check-ins and periodic reviews of our work, so we know that they will issue their, their sort of formal determination uh, in June of this year. Uh, we're hopeful the legislature will act on the package the governor has put forward. And then we have periodic check-ins that extend out well into the future, uh, an important one in 2021, um, and then ones about every 18 months thereafter. Ladies, um, thank you again for being here. And I did initially want to talk about this new report and online dashboard when it comes to projects and putting money to good use, basically, when it, when it comes to water issues, clean water issues. Emily, help me out here. What is this online dashboard really going to provide to people out there? Sure. So we've been working across state government for the last three years to get all state agencies that fund important clean water projects on a similar data standard. And now all of the projects that the state of Vermont has invested in over the last three years that are making for real water quality improvements, mm -hmm. those data are accessible to the public through this online dashboard. And this is very exciting because folks can explore the data set in the investment report, but if they want to take a deeper dive and really learn about the projects in their neck of the woods, they're able to go and do that. And they can search for projects through a number of search criteria, whether it's project type or region, uh, agency and be able to see real data on individual projects and not just the state's investments in those projects but the results of those investments and how they're going to make a big difference for us meeting the water quality goals that ultimately EPA will be assessing us on in the future. Okay, these are some 1400 projects. How much money are we talking? Well, over the last two years, the state of Vermont has invested over $100 million in clean water projects, and we've seen this investment ramping up substantially over the last three years. And the good news is that as those investments are ramping up, we're also starting to see that the cumulative results of those investments are really starting to take off. 
and we've been doing a lot of work to lay out some programs that will support this work in the long term. So we're starting to see the benefit of all this work and investment. When it, when it comes to uh, people who you know, live around bodies of water um, and to certainly use it over time in the summer, et cetera, was this something that Vermonters really wanted that you heard from? Uh, absolutely. I, I think from algae blooms in, in some of the northern embayments and Lake Champlain and, and down here in the Burlington area as well, Lake Carmi, Lake Memphremagog, we know that there are water quality challenges um, in many water bodies across the state. Um, and we know that the way to, to address those challenges is, is these important on the ground projects spread across the landscape, uh, whether it's working on farms, working to uh, treat runoff from our roads or our parking lots, um, and encouraging individual landowners to look at changes they can make on their own property. It's the cumulative effect of all of those pieces that will um, ultimately result in the kind of water quality conditions we want to see in our rivers and lakes. When you mentioned blue-green algae, you know, a lot of, there were times beaches last summer were right. closed often. Was that a particularly bad year? Would you scale it that way? Or how would you, how would you describe it? And how would this money help? So the, the, the true causes of, of blue-green algae blooms, um, there, there's a number of factors that really contribute. And it's hard to pin it to any one thing. Um, Lake Carmi last year saw far fewer blooms than they saw in 2017. Other areas of, along Lake Champlain certainly saw more blooms. So it, I think it depends on where you were, how you would answer that question. Uh, the projects that Emily's describing are really intended to address sediment and nutrient pollution, which are the, the two causal factors that we know have a role to play in blue-green algae blooms. And so to the extent we can keep the soil in place, keep the nutrients doing the work we need it to do to grow crops, um, we will see fewer algae blooms in the future. Emily, I noticed some before and after pictures on your website. What are some of the possibly big projects that Vermonters will click on and really see quite a turnaround with. Sure, and as Julie mentioned, what it's really about are a number of projects across the landscape when we're trying to control the nutrient and sediment pollution that's driven by rainfall and snow melt. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the projects aren't that large in scale, but the cumulative results are going to make a really big difference. A great project, as an example, you can find on the dashboard is a stormwater treatment project that was put in place near the Georgetti Arena in Rutland. It was a great partnership with the Rutland County Natural Resource Conservation District and Vermont Youth Conservation Corps, where they used natural processes to build a treatment practice that will control the stormwater runoff from about one and a half acres of hard surfaces and be able to provide some phosphorus treatment. So these are the kinds of projects that you'll find when you're looking into the dashboard. And these projects are obviously going to provide a water quality benefit, but there's a number of co-benefits that come along with clean water projects. And that may include flood resiliency, public education and outreach, as well as some aesthetic benefits and the ability to support our working landscape and to keep water quality in good shape for visitors and Vermonters to enjoy. Transparency, I know, is important to you, but also it must be easier for people because a lot of these projects go unnoticed, right? Yes. Because we're talking about things that you can't see uh, with the naked eye. So that would help too, I bet, for sure. a lot of people. And some of the projects are very visible, and we've launched a new initiative where while these projects are under construction, the grant recipients are required to post a clean water project sign so that it will boost the visibility and help the public to identify these projects as State of Vermont clean water projects. And all state government is working to post these signs uh, from Agency of Agriculture to our agency and Agency of Transportation. I imagine that the public will start to see more of these and start to make the connection over the coming year. Wow. What has the reaction been like so far? I know it's early on, but mm -hmm. when it comes to this dashboard, what have people been saying? The, the reaction I've heard is, is that they are pleased to see um, really accessible information about the work that's going on on the ground. I think one of the challenges of, of clean water is the, the current condition of our water bodies is really a reflection of decades, if not centuries, of human existence mm -hmm. here on the landscape in Vermont. And it's going to require patience and persistence to, to clean up our waters. Um, and so at times it can be frustrating when we say we've spent $100 million over the last two years and people may not see an appreciable impact mm -hmm. um, in their local lake or river. 
uh, the dashboard allows folks to, to get under the hood and see the types of Follow projects. Follow the money. That's right. Mm -hmm. See what's being done on the ground um, and hopefully develop an appreciation for the fact that what we're talking about in the end is tens of thousands of relatively modest projects that will be sort of sprinkled throughout the landscape. Okay. Wonderful. We'll put all the information up where people can, can get this information. But ladies, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We'll be right back on What Matters This Week.